Our team recently participated in a skills discussion with several professionals from the telecoms industry. One of the topics raised was how to effectively explain the concept of telecoms to young students. A common suggestion was to equate telecoms with connectivity, which most industry experts in the room agreed with. However, we believe that telecoms encompasses much more than just connectivity and deserves a more comprehensive explanation. In this brief introductory video, we aim to expand on and clarify what telecoms truly involves. What does telecoms or telecommunications actually mean? It's a combination of two words, tele and communications. Tele means far, distance or at a distance. Communications means imparting or exchanging of information by speaking, writing or using some other medium. In simple terms, telecommunications can be said to be electronic transmission of information over a distance. Note that we are not using the term far anymore because while in previous times the distance was emphasized, it's not relevant anymore. You will see examples of this later on. One comes across telecommunications or telecoms infrastructure every day. There are mobile masts, lampposts and towers to transmit and receive signals from mobile phones. We are now heavily reliant on. There are street cabinets that carry phone lines and optical fiber connections from the internet service providers exchange to our homes and offices. There are also large satellite dishes to communicate with different types of satellites in our skies. There are also different types of telecoms equipments within our homes and offices. Many of us still have landline phones, whether connected directly to the phone socket or with just the base connected and the handsets working on wireless decked technology. We also have fiber modems, wireless routers and ethernet cables. Many homes still have a TV dish on the roof, even if they don't use satellite TV services. With Starlink satellite broadband becoming more popular, we are starting to see Starlink dishes outside of homes. We also have various devices and gadgets that we don't refer to as telecom devices or gadgets, but that's what they are. This category contains laptops, smartphones, tablets, gaming consoles, smartwatches, Bluetooth headphones, head mounted devices, wireless cameras and doorbells, smart speakers and everything else that can communicate with the outside world with wires or wirelessly. Where does one generally hear the word telecoms nowadays? It could be for a profession like telecoms engineer, telecom sales manager or telecom consultant. It could be for a mobile operator like British Telecom, Deutsche Telekom. Similarly, we have Telecom Malaysia, Telcom, which is an operator in South Africa. And finally, we have Battleco, which is Bahrain Telecom. Then we have generic terms like telecoms industry, telecom service provider, telecom services, telecom networks, telecom equipment, etc. Finally, there are publications like Total Telecom, Developing Telecoms, Telecom TV, and many more like that. Let's look at some of the telecom services that one encounters regularly. Let's start with the basic voice services, which include all kinds of voice-based communications, including landline phones, mobile phones, internet-based calling, voice messaging, and everything else. Video services include all kinds of video-based communications, including video calling, video streaming, video on demand services like Netflix and YouTube, video conferencing, etc. Messaging services include native text-based messaging like SMS, but also voice messaging and video messaging. There are lots of messaging apps available on smartphones like WhatsApp, iMessage, etc. We have taken connectivity to the internet for granted, but the main aim of the internet was to be able to send and receive any kind of data from anywhere in the world. This includes basic services like browsing, but everything you do on your computers and devices is eventually sending and receiving some kind of data. Broadcasting was traditionally associated with TV and radio, but now extends to mobile technology as well. There is a facility to broadcast emergency messages in certain geography or regions to warn people very quickly about a disaster like an earthquake or tsunami. 
other broadcast-based enhancements are in development as well as in the mobile communication standards. Last but not least, we shouldn't forget about the short-range communications, which have become very common without people taking much notice. Take, for example, all Bluetooth-based earbuds, headsets, computer mouse, etc. All instances of the short-range communications. Other examples include smartwatches, remote controls, baby cameras, home security systems, including wireless doorbells, wireless cameras, etc. There are also many other devices like smart bulbs, smart meters, and there is some kind of wireless connectivity in all kinds of gadgets, including your toaster and kettle. Some of these may be unnecessary, but wireless connectivity allows the manufacturers to call them smart. Now that we have looked at the different aspects of telecoms, it's about time we discuss the medium used for communications. The first is obviously the wired link, which includes copper wires, coaxial cables, and nowadays fiber optic cables to enable high speed broadband communications. Wireless is the most widely used and talked about medium for telecoms nowadays. Instead of using the term mobile communications, we just use 4G and 5G, with research ongoing for the next generation of cellular technology. Satellite communications is booming with the launch of Starlink satellites. There are many others in the process of launching their own mega constellations. We use Wi-Fi for our laptops, tablets, and even smartphones at homes and offices. Bluetooth devices have become a must in our everyday lives, with the Bluetooth headsets or earbuds being the most widely used. NFC is another wireless technology that has gained popularity over the last few years due to a surge in mobile payments. There are other not very well-known technologies like Zigbee, Z-Wave, Thread, etc., which have become popular due to the transition to smart homes. There are a lot more technologies that we haven't covered here, but hopefully you get an idea on where else wireless communications play an important role. Finally, there are also light-based communications that are not often talked about. The simplest example is the use of infrared in our remote controls like the ones used for TV. There are also laser-based communications that are popular for point-to-point -point links. These links can be used for very long distances, for example, from a satellite to an earth station on the ground. There is also visible light communications, which has been researched for a while now. This offers a secure communication channel and can be used for a variety of purposes. Now that we have looked at the basics of telecoms, let's discuss how telecoms technologies are evolving. Every electronic device and gadget can be expected to have some or other form of connectivity in the future. The applications running on devices need to communicate with the application servers that run the cloud or other data center. This generally requires high-speed communications with low latency. 5G and Wi-Fi have solved this to some extent, but in the future we need even higher data rates, especially outdoors, we may need 6G. An example of the need for higher data rates can be understood from this video, showing collaborative XR. XR stands for extended reality, which is an umbrella term for augmented reality, virtual reality and mixed reality. A virtual meeting is taking place to discuss a new product. The meeting attendees could be in the office, in person, or can join remotely. Once they are there, wearing their glasses or head-mounted display, they can see all the virtual information that all remote participants can see. They can then collaborate on the design, update the model, turn it around, and everyone else should see it the way they are seeing it as well. This may sound simple, but there are many other challenges in addition to connectivity that needs to be addressed. Another area that has gained significant attention over the last few years is that of satellite communications. While satellites are used for all kinds of reasons, it's the broadband connectivity that has gained significant interest from everyone. These satellites are not being launched in different orbits. The ones in low Earth orbit, or LEO, are referred to as mega constellations. They are expected to significantly improve the availability of connectivity where no mobile networks can reach for example, in plains and in the middle of the ocean. 
autonomous or self-driving vehicles is another area that will benefit with the availability of connectivity. They use information from cameras, LiDAR and radar to create a 3D digital map of their surroundings. While today they mostly operate by themselves in the future, they will communicate with other vehicles around them to gain more information of the surroundings and decide on their speed, acceleration, braking, when it is safe to turn and drive safely by anticipating the movements of others. While autonomous vehicles should operate smoothly and safely, even when they have no connectivity to the network, it will definitely help if connectivity is available. Within built up areas, the autonomous vehicles can receive information from infrastructure, such as traffic lights, road signs, lane markings and roadwork sites to give you a heads up about traffic jams, road closures, accidents or even a sharp bend in the road before you can see it. While there is so much more we can talk about, in the interest of time, we are going to conclude this presentation. Let us know what you think about it, what did we miss and how else could you explain telecoms to others. Thanks for watching and see you again soon. Goodbye.